Today we're starting in on zooming in on polynomials. And basically this gives us an opportunity to take a deeper dive into a certain class of functions. We've talked a lot about functions. We know certain properties. We know how to find things like domain and range, composition and inverses. But now we're zooming in on this particular category of functions. So we need to talk a little bit about what makes a function polynomial so that we can identify them. And then in the coming videos, we'll be talking about the cool things we can do. So just real quick, in case it helps, um, I'm going to draw a goofy diagram because I like this idea. So, right, if I think about all dogs, I do love dogs. Dogs break down to different types of dogs. So maybe I'll just write a couple that come to mind. Labs, um, German Shepherds, my personal favorite. Shepherds. And how about Chihuahuas? Because those are pretty cute too. So in the same way, functions can be thought of as the, the big picture here, like the dogs. And then functions break down into other classes. So we could say polynomial. Um, we could say another kind we'll learn about soon will be rational. We've talked a little bit about rational. Um, another type we'll see is exponential. Right, so just to get this idea that it's a subset of functions. So it's going to have certain unique characteristics, just like a German Shepherd has characteristics that are different from those of a Chihuahua. So let's talk about what it means for a function to be polynomial. Let me go ahead and start by just writing out some functions that I, I'm sure you've all seen, and we'll see if we can find any unifying themes, any common characteristics. So I'm just going to write a bunch of functions. And if you happen to have seen our toolkit functions handout, these will look strangely familiar. So I'm going to write a rational because we've talked a little bit about those related to domain. I'll write a radical. Um, I'll write one to get us thinking towards the future and then the future of this class. And then I'll write one that gets us thinking towards the future in another class. So again, just a hodgepodge of functions. And I want to ask if we can identify which of these eight functions that I just randomly wrote down are considered polynomial. And then from that, we'll form our definitions. So I love definitions that show you what things are, um, but that also show you counterexamples because that helps, I think, define something. So it turns out that half of these functions are polynomial and half are not. So I'll just go through kind of one by one um, and circle the polynomials here in green. So this linear function is polynomial. This constant function is polynomial. This quadratic function is polynomial. Maybe you've seen before x cubed, that's a cubic function. So those first four are all polynomial. And these bottom four, although functions, do not classify as polynomial functions. They are other types. So what is constant in the first four? What element do you find that is lacking in the bottom four? What could help us define a polynomial function? In particular, what might you notice about the exponents? Technically, this first linear example right, has a power of 1 on x. If the power is not stated, it's understood to be 1. Um, for my constant function, maybe we're aware that x to the 0 power is the same as 1, so I technically could say that's really just constant times x to the 0. And then, of course, we can see the quadratic and cubics have powers of 2 and 3. The, the functions that I crossed out below, I'm going to use rules of exponents that may or may not be super familiar, but 1 over x, you can actually write as x to the power of negative 1, because when you bring x to the first up from the denominator, the power just becomes negative. Maybe you're aware that square roots can actually be written as rational exponents. So the square root of x is actually the same as x to the 1 half power. And then there's not a whole lot I can do with this e to the x guy and this sine of x term. So maybe we can focus then on the ones that do have exponents. That'll help narrow us down here. 
So how are the powers on x to the negative 1 and x to the 1 half different from the powers we saw on x to the first, x squared, x to the 0, and x cubed? I think we've basically come up with our definition of polynomial functions. So for a function to be a polynomial, it will involve variables raised to non-negative integer powers. And it could ha involve a sum or difference of variable terms. So I think the key thing to note here is that these powers, 1, 0, 2, and 3, those are all non-negative, right? They're all positive or 0. And then they're integers, and that just means um, basically I could say like whole numbers, right? So it's not fraction powers, right? So that's why x to the negative 1 out is out for polynomial because it's negative. x to the 1 half is out because it's a fraction, not a whole number. So let me write that a little bit more formally. Hopefully that discussion helped clarify in your mind what makes a function polynomial. So a little definition. So a function is polynomial. If, um, I'll just say it this way, it's really a focus on those uh, exponents on the variables. So if the exponents on the variables, and there may be one variable, two variables, doesn't, um, variable terms are, we said non-negative, so that means either zero or positive, right? And then we also said um, those powers have to be integers. So that means like not a fraction. That can't be simplified to a whole number. So hopefully that helps a little bit. Let's just do a couple examples and then um, we will call it good. So talking a little bit about these defini this definition, getting a handle on what makes a function polynomial. So dive on into a couple examples. Um, let's say is f of x equals um, 4x to the power of 9 plus 10x squared minus 1 a polynomial. Let's just answer the yes or no first. And then if we answer yes, I'll dig a little deeper. So check out the different terms here, right? We've got, in this case, a sum and difference of some terms. Um, and we want to ask ourselves, are the powers on the variable terms non-negative and integers? So how do we feel about 9? 9 is non-negative, correct? And 9 is an integer. 2, same deal. 2 is positive, right? So it's definitely non-negative. And 2 is, of course, can be written as 2 over 1, but it always simplifies back to that integer of 2. Cool. So, yes, this guy is in good shape. No troubles. Um, this constant term at the end, remember what I did earlier, is you can write that as x times x to the 0. It doesn't change its meaning. So, technically, that term has a non-negative integer power also. Cool. So diving a little deeper into this example, a follow-up question that we could ask ourselves would be, um, can we talk about something called the leading coefficient? And can we talk about the degree of the polynomial? So, sorry, I'm struggling to get my screen to move down. It's the most frustrating thing about this app, so I do apologize. I often struggle. Oh, I think it's not letting me have any more space. That's it. Okay. Well, I will squeeze it on at the end here. So the degree and the leading coefficient. Okay. The degree is pretty straightforward. The degree of a polynomial is going to be whatever power is highest. So between our powers of 0, 2, and 9, 9 is the highest. So that's the degree of the polynomial. Then the leading coefficient kind of follows nicely from the degree. Basically, this is saying, what is the 
constant multiple on the term with the highest power. So in our case, we can see that 4 is the coefficient on the x to the 9 term, so that would be considered the leading coefficient. This problem was nicely given where the order went from highest power to lowest power. So when it's in that standard order, the leading coefficient does in fact come first. Just be careful in case the order switches up on you.